Okay, in this second video, I'm gonna actually show you on a real system how to deploy a virtual APIC on ACI Mini. If you remember in the last video, we said we needed to have a few things in place before we actually do the deployment. Normally, namely, we've uh, already um, spun up our phys physical APIC, discovered our fabric, connected in the SXI host, and we need to tick the box for the AEP in order to trunk the infra VLAN down to where the virtual APICs are running. So with that in mind, let's have a look at a real system. Okay, here I am logged into my one physical APIC here, and you can see I have uh, a non-production setup. This is just a lab. Uh, so I have one spine, I have two leaves, uh, and behind those two leaves, I actually have my physical APIC already connected. And we can also see on my leaves, Ethernet port 31, I have a VPC basically configured. This is the uh, connection down to my ESX host. I have an AEP here called ESX underscore AEP. Everything has been configured in terms of front panel port connectivity. Now let's actually go ahead and check the AEP under fabric access policies. Under policies, global attachable access entity profiles, here's my AEP. I need to make sure that that particular box is ticked, but there's actually one more thing that I actually need to do because in my case, in my lab, I've chosen to do this using VMM integration. So I need to make one small change to the VMM integration configuration and we find that under the virtual networking tab. Okay, this is the view of my VMM domain here in ACI called VC underscore site two. Uh, and in the configuration, which has already been done ahead of time, I just need to go and tick this box called configure infra port groups. And when I do that, it will automatically push the special port groups needed to the DVS where I'm gonna connect my VA picks on the infra side of the house. And if we switch over to see the view from uh, vCenter itself, we can see here's my DVS integrated from ACI. And this particular port group called Infra PG was automatically pushed when I tick the box. And if we go and we look at the edit settings and we look at the VLAN, it should be a VLAN type of VLAN trunking. It's good to double check that. If it's not VLAN trunking, you need to actually change it to trunking. And you can see that it automatically inserted the infra VLAN that I have chosen in my lab of 3456. Now, if you choose not to do DVS integration when you deploy your VA picks, you would just create a vSwitch or a standalone DVS on your own independent of ACI, and you would create a port group and you would call it infra-pg, you would make it a VLAN type of trunking, and then of course you would type in your infra VLAN. Okay, so let's get on to actually deploying a virtual APIC. So I've already gone to cisco.com and I've downloaded the appropriate version of the OVA uh, uh, relative to my fabric. So I'm running the latest 4.2.2G. So you can see I've downloaded that here and I've got it in, uh, in this case, a content library. You can have it in a data store. You can upload it from a local machine. I just have it in a, a, um, a, a content library in my vCenter for easier deployment. So I'm gonna right click on there and I'm gonna say new virtual machine from this template. Gonna need to give it a name. So I'll call this uh, VAPIC uh, AMS2, um, and I'm gonna have to uh, choose a location to deploy it, just like any other um, uh, VM. So in my particular environment, in my lab, I've got a host here at 116 that is connected to my ACI fabric. It's directly connected per requirements. So I'll select that host. Go ahead and click Next. Now I need to select some storage, and if you remember, the requirements say this has to be directly connected to local storage. So I have a local uh, hard drive here. It is not an SSD, which I know breaks the rules, but this is a lab deployment when I just wanted to let you know you can kind of get around that requirement as long as this local hard drive is, is reasonable in performance. So I've got a, a local hard drive here. Now normally the OVF uh, wants to deploy a stick provisioned and that's how you should leave it. But again, this is a lab environment, so I'm gonna go ahead and get away with thin provisioning because you can see my hard drive really doesn't have that much capacity. In this step, I just need to select the networks that this VA pick will live on. And if you remember from earlier, we have two interfaces. One of those interfaces will face the infra and form a cluster with the physical APIC. The other one is for out of band management network. So the infra network, we already know what that one should be selected as. It's the infra PG that was automatically pushed when I made the configuration change in ACI for this integration. The other one, the out of band network, remember I said that this network doesn't belong to ACI, it's out of the ACI data plane. In fact, it's you know, recommended you have a separate 
out of band uh, network for management. So I have one and it's on a local V switch here. It has nothing to do with the DVS, but I had already created it ahead of time. And so I'll select the proper port group. Here is where maybe the most important part of the configuration lies. It's going to ask you questions about this particular VA pick. This is the uh, parallel. This is the analog of what you do when you uh, uh, install a physical APIC and you have to answer those first questions upon initial startup. This is what that looks like in terms of vCenter. So you got to have this information correct. So the question goes is where, where do I find this this information in order to properly answer these questions? Well, we can find it in APIC and let me show you where you look for that information. Okay, so back in APIC under the system tab under the sub tab called controllers, you can see this is my one physical APIC called APIC 2-AMS. And if I click on cluster as seen by node, you can see that I've got a fabric ID of two, that's important. A fabric name is AMS-FAB2. A cluster size of three, but I've only got one physical APIC. That's okay for the moment because we're gonna add the two V APICs. And then down here, we can see that the, the TEP pool address of APIC number one is 10.10.0.1. Now I know in my lab, when I set this up, I chose the TEP pool here of 10.10.0.0 slash 16. So I'll keep that in mind when I actually go to configure the V uh, APIC itself. Okay, for sake of time, I've gone ahead and filled in all the settings. There's my fabric name, which matches the physical APIC. This is uh, fabric ID 2, uh, which also matches my physical APIC. Cluster size is 3, that's 3 APICs in the cluster. Pod ID is 1. This particular APIC will be APIC number 2. Uh, so I'll go ahead and um, you know put in 2, give it a name, uh, make sure my tep pool addresses match my existing physical fabric, everything looks good there. My infra VLAN 3456 matches uh, my lab as well. And then as I scroll down, I have out of band management configuration settings. So here I've chosen uh, a hard coded address uh, for my out of band management. Now, if you have a DHCP server, it can get an address that way. In my case, I, I hard code it. So I've got that assigned. So IP address, mask and gateway. At the very bottom, I didn't fill this in because I want to show you where you get it. In order to securely add the virtual APIC into the fabric, we need a, 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 a an APIC passphrase because that allows them to securely exchange communications and make certs and everything, do everything in a proper way. So where do I get that APIC passphrase? Well, we've got to go back to APIC to actually get it. And let me show you where that is. So here we are back in APIC under the system tab, under the sub tab called system settings, there is an item there called APIC passphrase. Now this passphrase resets itself every 60 minutes, uh, but it's good for another hour after expiration. So what you need to do here is we can see I've got 14 minutes left and I'll go ahead and copy this passphrase and I'll bring it back into vCenter and paste it in the proper field. So here I am uh, in the, the last uh, uh, step of uh, deploying the VAPIC and I am pasting the VAPIC password that I just got, I'm sorry, the APIC passphrase that I just got from my physical APIC and I'll go ahead and click next. At this stage, I'll go ahead and click finish like anything else and we'll, it'll take a while to copy down. So I'm gonna fast forward the video after everything is fully copied. It takes about 10 minutes or so. Okay, after so many minutes, uh, the copying has finished down to my, uh, uh, to my, my server connected to ACI uh, and I've uh, only simply you know, powered on the VAPIC and I let it sit. Now at this point, I would just advise have a little bit of patience because it does take some time for the APIC to spin itself up um, sort of deploy its configuration of the, the settings that we set, uh, you know, and then sort of bring up its interfaces, connect itself to the fabric and actually synchronize itself to the fabric. So it does take a few minutes. So, um, you know, like I said, give it some time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look and go and see what, uh, things look like from the point of view of ACI. So I'm back in system controllers again, and from the point of view of my physical APIC that I've highlighted here, I've clicked on cluster as seen by node, and you can actually see that my virtual APIC has actually joined the fabric. It's in service and it's fully fit. This is exactly what you wanna see. Uh, what I didn't capture and my mistake is when this APIC first joins the fabric, it goes into a mode called data layer synchronizing and you might sort of let that sit for a few minutes in fact you have to let that sit for a few minutes and then after so many minutes i would just kind of click off and then click back in and refresh and you'll see that it has moved to a fully fit state and that's exactly what we want to see now what i would do at this point is i would do this all over again for va pick number three and at that point i would have a fully functioning proper uh, aci mini cluster with one physical apic two virtual apics 
Now, what happens real quick if for whatever reason it just doesn't seem to be working? There's a couple of things I recommend you check before you would call tech. So the first thing is, you know, you, you've powered on the, the, the VA pick and it just for whatever reason is not joining the fabric. It's just it's not looking good no matter what you do. Uh, it's just not working. So what I would do is I would go back to your vCenter and under the, um, the VA pick configuration of the VM itself, under V app options, if you scroll down, you'll see that these are the areas that we set when we deployed the, the OVA in the first place, like Infra VLAN ID, name, IP address. What I would do is I would just triple check that everything is looking the way it should. So fabric name must match. VLAN ID, is this the correct one for your fabric? And mine 3456 is right. Further down, check the TEP pool. Is the TEP pool in the mask right? Earlier on when I was doing this, I accidentally assumed 10.00 slash 16 and not 10.10, and my VA pick wasn't joining, and I was wondering why. Well, that turned out to be it. And then finally, um, so if you do find that any of these things are, are incorrect and you wanna make a change, what you have to do is you have to power off the VA pick, select the uh, setting that you wanna change, and up at the top, click edit. This would, of course, light up if the VA pick was powered off. Make your change, power the APIC back on. It will uh, get this change and likely then rejoin the fabric. Now, there's one more thing to check. Let's say you the copy function was just taking far too long. And so you say, I'm going to go home or I'm going to go to lunch, come back a few hours later and finish this thing off. But for some reason, your VA pick doesn't join. There is one more thing to check. And that has to do with the, uh, the APIC passphrase. Remember, this is a passphrase is only good for a couple of hours. So it's likely that that period of time has expired and you need to, to reset it. So again, you would power down the VA pick, select this setting and update it with the new passphrase. And we know that back in APIC under system, system settings, we could go under APIC passphrase and get the next uh, uh, available passphrase and paste it in here, power back the VA pick, and it would probably join the fabric. If none of that actually works in the end, at this point, I, I, would, I would call tech and let the experts look at it. So there you have it. That's exactly how you deploy your VA picks uh, for ACI Mini. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much.